That doesn't really mark a change from the past. The Intel Pentium is certainly a miracle of miniaturization, packed with close to 7.5 million tiny transistors. But just hours before the launch, news was flashed across the internet that a fault had been detected. At this point, it's hard for me to judge, and, and in fact, we try very hard not to judge these anymore, but to provide the data to the industry so they can determine the impact on end users and end users themselves. The Pentium 2 is initially being targeted at the workstation market, where users require highly sophisticated graphics. Regular PC consumers will have to wait. Two versions are now available, 233 and 266 megahertz, and the next generation will run at 300, though the product has also been demonstrated in the lab at 400 megahertz. But does the average consumer really need it? Most of the question marks are over the performance of uh, the new Pentium 2, uh, and, and there it really p depends on the applications that you run. If you're running a word processor, for example, it would make little difference whether you use a Pentium machine, a Pentium 2, or indeed one of uh, the machines powered by, a, uh, by Intel's competitors' chips. Uh, but for some applications such as video conferencing or 3D graphics, things like this, Intel claims that there will be a, uh, they will have a 25% uh, speed advantage over their uh, closest rivals. The architecture of the Pentium 2 is very different to its predecessors. Instead of sitting on the motherboard, the new chip will be attached to a PC card. There's six chips inside here, plus a, a number of other types of electronic components. And it turned out it was very expensive to put that in the traditional package with the gold pins on it. And this turns out in the long term to be a much more cost-effective way to deliver the technology to the market. It also means that initially it will be harder to copy. But while the changes may seem to be revolutionary, does the Pentium 2 really represent a great leap forward? In general terms, it's an evolutionary rather than a revolutionary move. Uh, it does offer advantages. Um, it will be harder for competitors to copy, at least in the short term. But uh, these are not, uh, in my view, uh, astonishing breakthrough advantages. Uh, they are evolutionary steps of the sort that we've seen in previous generations. It's still too early to say how bad the flaw in the new chip will actually turn out to be. But what is for certain is that the arrival of the Pentium 2 will initially only benefit those running highly sophisticated software packages. The humble PC user will have to wait some time before the hardware and the software becomes available. Guy Johnson.